Welcome to the Jean Hales Podcast Women's Health Week series, where we talk about all the things you want to hear but can never ask. Here's your host, Janet Mishelmore. Today's guest is Flavia Sicatini, a renowned rheumatologist and head of the musculoskeletal unit at the Alfred Hospital. In layman's terms, she deals with how people move and what impacts their movement. This conversation is not about gym programs or frankly the COVID kilos, thank heavens. We wanted to talk about how everyday movement like walking to the shops or vacuuming can affect your health. It was an absolute eye-opener for me and I strongly recommend listening to this while you're walking because that is exactly what she would want. Here's my interview with Flavia Sicatini. So Flavia, while we're recording this, over 12 million Australians are in lockdown. And I know what's happened to my body during lockdown, and it's not all good news, let me tell you. But what does happen to your body when you don't move enough? It has a huge effect. So there's evidence that if you take someone and put them in bed or rest for one week, they lose 10% of their muscle. If that continues for two weeks, it's 25% of their muscle strength. So it's a huge effect. And what's important is that not only do you get that quick reduction in muscle strength, it actually takes two to three times as long to regain it. And we all do what we can. We've been in lockdown. Sometimes we just don't have time to exercise. But I think the key point is that we should keep moving. Now, what that means for an individual will depend on what's possible. So it might be that you should go for a walk every day. If it's raining outside, you stand up and walk around the house. If you're taking teleconferences or, you know, you might just be on the phone and walk around. So you just maintain activity. And I think we underestimate how useful walking is. If you happen to be an enthusiastic gym attender, if you suddenly say, well, the exercise I do at home is just nothing like I do at the gym, so I'll just take a break, you actually lose condition within two weeks. Now, the danger then, if you're a really regular gym attender with a fantastic program, if you've been in lockdown for two, three weeks and really not done much at all, there's a danger that if you go back to the gym with the program that you used to do two weeks ago, the danger is that you do it and tear something. So even young people lose massive condition very, very fast. So it happens to everybody. Not just those over 50. (laughs) Yeah, not just us oldies. So you don't have to think that only going for a jog or only running or only doing 20 kilometres is exercise. It's really important to just keep active. There is possibility of thinking like, Is there activity that I can do incidentally? Flavia, what do you mean by incidentally? In fact, what activities can you do incidentally? So incidental exercise is where you incorporate some activity and it might just be walking as part of your day. Now, I think each person has to think what their life's like. So for example, If you're someone who goes to work on public transport, you could add a few minutes to that trip and stop a station earlier or or at a different place so that you just include some walking. If you're at home, many people make phone calls during the day. There's no reason you necessarily have to be sitting down while you're making that phone call. You can be walking around while you're doing it. Not everybody, but many people have a step counter on their telephone now. And so you can 
even just track how many steps you do, just to give you a bit of an idea. Flavia, lockdown is one reason why people may not be moving enough, but I suspect it's not the only one. Staying active is also really difficult and really important for people with a disability, or maybe those who are recovering from an illness. What kinds of tips or strategies do you have for these people when it comes to staying active? So some people have very significant disabilities, but people still do need to be active. Now, we don't encourage that you push through the pain. For most people, pain is a sign that that area isn't happy. So there's no point pushing it. Because, you know, the other thing is if you've got a sore joint or, and then you decide, well, I'm not, I'm going to ignore it and walk 10 kilometres, well, that's fine, but you'll probably spend the next three weeks not able to move at all. And what we really want is some slow, steady movement. I'm passionate about people using AIDS, absolutely passionate. Sorry, Flavia, when you say AIDS, you mean like mobility AIDS, a walking stick or a walking frame, is that what you mean? They're the traditional ones, nothing more fancy than that. But in my category of walking sticks, I've now put in walking poles. Like if you're doing cross-country. Like cross-country and that. So some people will use anything to be mobile. You know, they don't care what it looks like. Other people get quite self-conscious, but walking poles are very good as well because, in fact, lots of people use them. You can actually go for a walk around the block, around the park, and you have two. You just can go further. I use them myself. So I injured my knee many, many years ago. It, I manage okay. I have periods where it's painful. but. If we're going to go for a walk, I get anxious that my knee's going to play up. If it's sore, I actually use the walking poles. If it's not sore but it's been niggling, I now use a backpack and have just got those poles that collapse down and just leave them in there. I don't, for example, if I've got a sore knee, go to a doctor to get a cortisone injection. I just think to myself, well, I know most of the time it comes and goes, comes and goes. I might get a support that you can buy over the counter at the chemist just to protect it and then use walking poles. Flavia, walking poles sound like a very good option if you need more support than a walking stick, for instance. What's the next level of support above that? And is this where we might look at a walker or a walking frame? I think the walkers are a totally brilliant idea, and I'll explain why. First of all, you're walking and you're straight. You're not hobbling around at an angle, okay? The second thing is that if at any stage you need to stop, you can sit and have a break because you've got a chair. And then if you've overdone it because you've got a bit overexcited, you can then make your way back slowly and if necessary, have a sit down. The other thing I think that's really, really important for older people who might have a problem somewhere is We're talking about exercise, yes, yes, yes. But as you get older, the one thing you do not want to happen is to fall over because if you are walked half a kilometre but realise it was a bit too much and you have to get back, you're likely to be in a bit of pain. There may be nowhere to sit and rest. And you increase your probability of actually having a fall. One of the other very big benefits of staying active is really the opportunity to go outside, be in the sunshine, see people, meet people, because mental health and being part of the community are really critical because even with aches and pains, the psychosocial factors are very big. 
And so we do want people to get out and about with whatever tools they need to make it possible. Flavia, thank you very much indeed for today because there was so much good advice in all the things that you talked about. For me, the main take-homes, keep moving however you can, whenever you can. And finally, that we should never be embarrassed about using mobility aids like walking sticks, poles or walkers. Thank you very much for taking the time to share all of your advice today. Thank you. Well, I think we all felt wriggly in our seats listening to that, and I know I will be heading out for a walk very soon with my gorgeous dog. But I do love Flavia's gentle nudge that a little movement goes a long way. If you enjoyed this interview, please make sure you listen to some of the others in our Women's Health Week series. Thank you for listening. You've been listening to the Jean Howells podcast, Women's Health Week series. For free expert health information for all women, girls and gender diverse people, visit jeanhales.org.au.